Hello and welcome everyone, it is Mithraval, also known as the Power to Build, back for you with another video. And as you can already see in front of you, we are engaging in the absolute lowest effort content that is there on Yu-Gi-Oh! YouTube. We're going to be talking about what my wish list and a couple of predictions are for the upcoming uh, August 2024 ban list, as Konami has revealed in us in an absolutely insane display of communication, which like... You know, of course, this should be, you know, a commonplace, but I think it is definitely still very highly appreciated that Konami lets us know these things. It'd just be cool if it became commonplace. But yeah, with that, I do have a list of cards I want to talk about next to me, and we'll be moving from bottom to top, putting cards on this list. Uh, starting here at uh, the very top with, uh, I think, a very uh, simple one. Um, Armageddon, it's probably going back to three. Uh, like what? What do you uh, like want me to say here? That's not like painfully obvious by now. Uh, even if this is a card with an absolutely impressive legacy behind it and an insanely powerful and very timeless effect, um, because graveyard setup is always great and on a non once per turn on a monster with probably the best type attribute combination in the game. Um, there's a lot here, but that lot is also like almost old enough to drink legally in Germany. Um, so yeah, well, at least hard liquors. But anyways, um, with that out of the way, um, keeping in like uh, the theme of last ban list, uh, Delicious Memory is moving up to three. Uh, this is not like, I think, a five head prediction. Um, and, and, you know, of course, Pearly has the potential to be a good deck in the near future. Um, but I don't think the format's changing in the near future, but we'll get to that when we, you know, have to cross that bridge. Um, so yeah, I definitely do think that not only can this happen, but also I think Konami will make this happen too. Uh, Armageddon Knights, um, but I think we'll be talking about, like, the nuances of what I think will, what, what I would like to see happen and what I think Konami will make happen. Uh, when we get to those pieces of cardboard. Moving into another piece of cardboard that I wish was at three, uh, which is going to be Dino Wrestler Pancratops. I don't I don't think Konami is going to do us that favor, but I think it'd be maybe high time that like Pancratops got back to three, uh, not only because it's an absolutely incredible tool for like going second, um, that decks can side into when they have to play into a board, um, but it's also like way past the point where like Pancratops is this absolutely broken side deck staple um, that already deals with like a lot of boards by its own. Um, and I think giving, you know, going second that extra bit of power, um, especially in a card that is very interactive, not necessarily reads, you know, I win if you resolve it going second, um, is absolutely great. That's why I would like to see Pancratops back at three. A lot of these are going to um, seem familiar, if you've seen my last panel's prediction. Um, and with that, we uh, introduce two familiar faces, which are going to be Rescue AS Airlifter and Unchained Soul of Shavara. I know Unchained Soul of Shavara is currently seeing a lot of play in uh, Jubel or Fiend Link, as it's uh, probably more commonly called. Um, but introducing Unchained as like a pure deck again into the format would, I think, be Pretty cool, not gonna lie. A very cool deck doesn't do a whole lot of like inherently broken stuff. Um, it's a lot of like mainly two card setups that are pretty good, pretty resilient into hand traps, and uh, Shavara would help a lot with that, uh, especially you know, with the things that I do believe Konami is uh, not going to do uh, on this list. Um, but yeah, Aleph does in a similar vein. Uh, Rescue Ace is nowhere except, you know, at like the top 64 table beating Joshua Schmidt. Um, and I think the second and third Aleph uh, are, I think, due for a return, uh, even if they've not, you know, been on the list for way too long. Uh, next up, uh, something that... Um, once again, gets into uh, wishful thinking, I think. Uh, is Magic Spectre Kirin to three? Uh, this has not done anything at one. This could be a six, and nothing would happen. Um, so, yeah. 
I don't think repeatable, non-targetable spinning is um, the end-all, be-all thing, um, especially since it's a pendulum card and those, like, have the inherent challenge of being pendulum cards. Uh, so, yeah, I'd like to see Kieran back to three. Um, he did nothing wrong. With that, we move into uh, a very, like, selfish one. I do have to admit that. Uh, Red Rolls dragging back to three. Um, why is going to get very apparent once we get to those semi limits. But yeah, um, a leftover from the Halka Firebrax days. This was a central piece in uh, like the three axis Synchro deck um, that made use of like the Adventure Engine, the Rose Dragons, like Halka Firebrax to go into like very powerful Synchro setups. Um, but with a lot of those payoffs and a lot of those enablers, mainly Halka Fibrax being banned now, uh, I think it is safe to say that Red Rose Dragon is perfectly fine to come back to three. <laughs> with that, we move into the greatest category of all, the semi-limited section. Um, and as you can see, yeah. Um, personally, would wish these back to, back to three um, if it were entirely up to me. Uh, all of these would move up to three, because I absolutely adore all these. Huge fan of these in Master Duel. Uh, enjoyed every second of it, even if it cost me a lot of UR dust. Um, if it's up to Konami, I think we'll just see Tempest moved up, because that is the one they unbanned first. Uh, so, you know, in that order, it would be Tempest, uh, Blaster, Redox, and then Tidal. Um, but since the OCG has done that move, Maybe the TCG department takes a page out of their book um, and moves these up, you know, altogether, which would be greatly appreciated. Um, another absolutely uh, irrelevant unhit from the olden times, mainly because it, it, it fits very well with Armageddon Knight, um, is going to be Dark Graffa. Um This could realistically be a lot of, like, limited cards on the, you know, limited list. This could be an Ancient Fairy Dragon, this could be like Deng Long, First of the Yang Zing. This could be an Infernity Launcher. Um, lots of like old cards that are there from like back when I first started. Um, and probably don't do anything in the modern game. So yeah, with that we uh, move into uh, a fairly sizable limit section and also into the uh, elephant in the room, uh, which is... Uh, I. Personally, would like to see Snake Eyes taken behind the shed, um, which is why, uh, for my sake, I'll put this guy up here. Um, insane cards. Um, it's removal, it's extension, and it's interaction. Because this guy moves up an IP Masquerina you put into the Spell and Trap card zone first. Um, Flamberch just does it all, and uh, at this point, it's very apparent that, like, uh, Snake Eye is a deck that does not have like good points to like significantly weaken it, where the deck is still playable, maybe still like tiered and good. Um, yeah, there's not a whole lot of cards you can like hit to accomplish that because like resolving Snake Eye Ash is still like functionally an FTK. Um, so yeah, I'd definitely like to see Snake Eyes taken behind the shed, but that is me talking. Uh, I think Konami is just going to do this. Uh, we are going to see very light hits to Snake Eye, um, like an Ash Limit, maybe a Sinful Spoils ban if you want to get really crazy with it. Um, but I don't think Konami is going to kill the deck on the upcoming list, which, you know, I it, it would certainly be time. Uh, it's been like six months, which is, you know, a fairly good lifespan for like a tiered deck, uh, especially one that has gotten a lot better with the recent set. Um, but especially with Megatons on the horizon, I think there is a chance that Konami holds up on this. Uh, I'd hate for it to be that way because personally, I'd like to see you know a lot of the decks that are below Snake Eyes in the tier list rise back up. And because a lot of those decks are very cool and about the uh, not so cool ones, we're going to talk about in a minute. Uh, but before that, we have to finish a limited section uh, with another card where um, if it were up to me, this would be going up here. But I think Konami is going to put this here. I personally like this here. 
And I think I'm going to put it there because I am going to, you know, put my foot down and overrule Konami. Um, this is just, like, it's such a terrible card. The game states that this encourages, and also the game states that this produces are just not fun to watch. They're, like, even less fun to play because we've all been in that situation where your opponent is sitting behind that floodgate and all you're doing is, you know, digging for, you know, whatever out you have in your main deck. And in the case of Skill Drain, those outs are few and far between, especially in a main deck. Um, post side, of course, this card gets a lot weaker, just like any other Floodgate. Um, but I'd rather see Floodgates removed from the format than, you know, brought back, um, which is why we are going to be talking about a couple of those uh, that I do think have to leave the format, uh, even, you know, if some of them are in this, like, a kind of tool for the weak role. But we are, we are not dealing with that. First of all, we are uh, continuing to uh, move down the limited section with uh, Heavy Storm. Um, this has joined Master Duel recently, has joined the OCG recently, um, and this is mainly a prediction. I personally don't want to see Heavy Storm back, because as mentioned at Pancratops, I don't think going second needs cards that, like, against certain decks, just read I win the game if they resolve. Um, and these, like, heavy blowouts are... I think part of that problem, um, it's not like a thing where I'd call those inherently degenerate because they're, a, I think, in my opinion, a very band-aid fix to uh, the problem of how oppressive going first can be because in a lot of cases it's a lot of advantage that you get to generate fairly uncontested. Um, so yeah, I think we're going to see Heavy Storm back or like I think uh, Konami is going to put Heavy Storm back to one. Um, but I personally uh, wouldn't be too excited about it. Um, but yeah, with that out of the way, uh, we move into... Oh, Arata. Aratas. Very much Arata. Uh, summon Sorceress. Um, the Arata for this card, is it? Is it in here? Uh, with the same type. I think summon special monster. Two target monsters cut points. Special monster. Yes, uh, the errata for this card would make it so that you're only able to special monsters with the same type after resolving her effect, which of course makes summon sorcerers a lot weaker. Um, I do think there's still, like maybe one or two decks that could take uh, make great use of her, um, but yeah, those are few and far between realistically. Um, and I think Konami might you know put this back to one. There's still like plush fire in the works. Um, because that's also getting errata in the OCG, and uh, yeah, maybe it's time to print, you know, summon sorceress with the errata, and also unlimiter. And now we are getting to those decks that I don't like in the format that are below Snake Eyes. We're going to limit Sang and summoning. Um, don't get me wrong, I like that there is a a good going second deck uh, in Tenpai in the format, because uh, you know, good going second decks are a rarity and uh, something that is usually a good thing. But the problem with Enpai is that it is one of those decks that has a card that is able to turn off 99% of pieces of interaction you have with that deck. Um, and I just, I, I hate that design work. I think Yu-Gi-Oh! is at its greatest when you are actively, you know, trading either, you know, card effects or, you know, card advantage with your opponent and not if your opponent activates a field spell that says you can't hand trap me and I'm going to like nuke you into the sun um, because Tenpai has lines that just casually kill you through prosperity is uh, kind of ridiculous if you think about it. Um, but yeah, would like to see Sang and summoning at one just so that this incredibly frustrating gameplay loop that, you know, Tenpai produces is a bit less safe, um, which I think would uh, do well in, you know, taking the deck down a bit, but not outright, you know, taking it out of the format, even if, you know, worse things have happened. With that, um, this is a lot of uh, wishful thinking. Um, Dimensional Fisher back to one. Um, I don't think this is going to happen, and uh, as mentioned with Skill Rain, I would personally like this band, if anything. Um, in in Insane cards. Um, just a spell card that says any monster that would hit the graveyard is banished instead. Uh, turns of a couple relevant hand traps, uh, mainly I think Ghost Ogre and Effect Veiler, um, but is also just incredibly detrimental for a lot of decks. Uh, the graveyard has become this, you know, 
a second hand as many people have already dubbed it um, and just cards that remove access to that I think just shouldn't be in any modern environment. Um, and before we get to another card in that vein, because I still have the uh, dimensional cards pull up, pulled up, um, I, I don't think this needs an explanation of why this is up here. Um, in the process of if we, you know, do get rid of Snake Eye, we do have to get rid of, you know, a couple, you know, very problematic cards in your decks that would, you know, follow back into the format uh, in the wake of Snake Eye. Uh, and one of those would be Dimensional Barrier, one of the, I think, more toxic tools that Labyrinth has available to it. Um, different Dimension Ground would probably also be like a good fit here. Um, but Dimensional Barrier is just the most egregious one because um, this is not only fairly generic. Um, you know, there have been formats in the past where, you know, a lot of decks cited this for going first, um, and I don't want to go back to those. <laughs> That'd be kind of cool. Uh, with that, uh, starting off strong with, uh, yeah, he almost won Euros, um, but instead he got Regekid on the B route for that matter. Uh, Arc Nemesis Protoss, I don't know why this came back. And I want it gone again. Um, I hate it. Uh, accessible off of a generic rank 4 Xyz monster. Um, and yes, you can say, but, you know, you can call fire and it hits Snake Eye. Yeah, but, like, post that, what's the next best thing? Um, you call Dark and you hit Ubel. Then you call, like, I don't know, Light and hit something like White Forest. Which, um, no. Just, like... Protoss is an absolutely insane card. We've banned this before for like the same reasons of this guy just skipping turns. Um, why did we bring it back? Like, I'm asking that same question with Colossus, um, but Colossus was not in the finals of Euros, uh, so he gets to kind of rest for now. But like, if it were up to me, I put Colossus up there as well, realistically. With that out of the way, uh, on the topic of cards that do remove access to the graveyard, why is Dimension Shifter still legal? <laughs> Insane card. It is absolutely baffling that, like, format after format for the last two to three years, there is this handful of decks that just gets the cheese wins off of decks because they've opened Dimension Shifter. Um, Again, the graveyard has become this incredibly central part of Yu-Gi-Oh! And while, yes, I would agree that there have been, you know, formats where, you know, the Mention Shifter has largely been this very anti-meta card, similar to how it is at the moment, I don't think games should be decided by has my opponent opened Dimension Shifter or do I get to play my deck that is already strong? Um... That's just not a bit of variance that I think is healthy for a competitive game. And effects like Dimension Shifter in general aren't healthy for a competitive game. Um, basically, taking a key mechanic out of, you know, your opponent's repertoire is never fun, is never good for the game, and shouldn't be in the game. Anymore. With that, um, we move into, I think, another obvious one, um, mainly once again, uh, cards that uh, would follow in the wake of Snake Eye if that deck gets banned. Um, I think we all know that like banning Gimmick Puppet is like not an option at this point. There's like two to three cards that accomplish the same thing. Uh, so yeah, branded players lose this, and maybe we will let them keep a branded Fusion for another couple months. But yeah, uh, with that, we I, this is more of like a contentious one, um, and I think something that is in line with like what Konami has. Done recent lists uh, with, you know, removing Baron and Savage out of the format, and I think the next generic negation tool to go is going to be Apollosa Bow of the Goddess. Um, she's been an absolute staple of, like, combo decks for, like, since she's printed realistically, um, and I think we can all agree on the fact that, like, turning X amount of bodies into X amount of monster negates is absolutely insane. Um, while it would certainly even hurt me in a way if she did go, um, I think for, you know, the long-term health of the game, similar to something like Baron, it is probably better if we get rid of the incredibly oppressive first tools, even if, granted, Apollosa has gotten a lot weaker since we removed those Omni-Negates, as she just deals with monsters. 
since, you know, a good bit of modern Yu-Gi-Oh! still relies on those powerful monster effects. Um, maybe having this in the format has reached its critical mass where it has to go. Um, a- another easy one, I think this is um, something that uh, I do believe Konami will do, and I would wholly agree. Um, Beatrice could have les- left us like five formats ago, and no one would have batted an eye. And especially with the Fiendsmith engine now out, um, yeah. Why is Fiendsmith Engraver full Snake Eye combo? Why is Beatrice like a turn skip if you run the right garnets? Just no. <laughs> Just like no. <laughs> um, yeah, more, more floodgates. We, we kill more floodgates. Killing floodgates is always good. And uh, yeah. This is, I think, at one, usually. I think rivalry is uh, usually at one, right? Um, point it out in comments, but I think um, rivalry is usually at one. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I just... Can we, like, take every floodgate and just, like, collectively agree on banning those? That'd be kind of great. Um, but yeah, with that out of the way, I think that is about it. Yeah. Um, Generally, a bit a bit of a mix of both. Um, you know, um, a lot of these things, especially up here, are things where I think, you know, also Konami might do that step. Uh, although not not really. <laughs> Sadly, um, I think Apollos is the most likely thing that Konami is going to do, similar to Beatrice. Um, these cards are you know very prevalent in the current format, um, and do kind of have reached that critical mass. Uh, the rest is, call it wishful thinking, but I'd just like to see a lot of floodgates gone. Um, and these are probably the most egregious ones at the moment. Uh, again, on Flamberge, I'd personally like to see this happen because there's a lot of cool decks waiting beneath Snake Eye to make their appearance. Um, but for that, Snake Eyes would have to go. Uh, but I think Konami will just leave us with very small consistency hits and nothing in you know, um, a big enough uh, with nothing with like a big enough impact to really sna- take snake eyes behind the shed. Um, but yeah, with all that out of the way, um, what are your thoughts on you know my list and my thoughts on the current list and uh, format and what I think uh, not only I would like to make happen but also what I think Konami will make happen. Um, let me know some of your thoughts down in the comments below. Um, this is, of course, a very interesting um, topic um, that is also very, you know, good to debate on because a lot of different thoughts on the whole matter. Do you maybe agree with me on, you know, that Konami might not kill a Snake Eye before the Megatons? Or do you say, no, this Snake Eye format is over. It is literally over. But yeah, with all that out of the way, um, leave your thoughts in the comments down below and I will be Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll be seeing you guys again next time. But until then, goodbye.